is uh, Osalo Siziva, who is one of the youngest Zimbabwean progressive politicians, um, who is also currently the Deputy National Spokesperson for Citizens Coalition for Change. Uh, he is currently a member of Parliament for Pelanda Bachavalala constituency. Um, so this, what we've uh, come together to actually um, discuss is for people to be able to uh, question him and so that he can also answer. So we understand that your questions and concerns are of great importance um, to the Triple C um, in a time where there is a lot of misinformation and a lot of like terrible attacks from Zanu PF directly and also through proxies. So ladies and gentlemen, before I ask the guest speaker to speak to us um, by just also answering just five questions um, for him before we ask people to come up. Um, she is also going to be helping uh, with the co-hosting. And um, thank you so much, Lida Ostalus, for joining us. Lida Ostalus, can you hear me? Thank you very much. Uh, I hope All right. can you confirm you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by going straight into the questions because we know that we have very limited time. The first question that I have for you, um, Lida Ostalis, is actually regarding um, all of this that is happening. Please provide a brief overview, firstly, of the party Triple C. How did it come into existence? And what is the connection with the MDC alliance led by advocate Nelson Chamisa in 2018 and the current Triple C? Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Um, first of all, let me thank... Um, uh, fellow citizens uh, who have joined us here in this uh, important um, uh, conversation. Um, thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Yes, loud and clear. Please go ahead. Yes, Lido Ostalus. Uh, I think I think uh, we have to fix uh, the issue of um, the cause can fix the others. People have uh, muted unmuted their mics. Um, please, can you drop a uh, Kazura programmer? He is the one with the open mic. Thank you very much, Ali Dostalos. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. I'll, I'll quickly uh, answer the uh, question that has been uh, put forward. You know that um, the democratic movement, as it was founded um, in September 99, had its own history, and um, I think that we have invested so much uh, on the history of the democratic alternative in our country, so I'll not uh, spend time to go into that part, but I'll just uh, pick from... Um, the uh, immediate past history, of course, of the assault that happened to the alternative, um, particularly during the COVID era, that necessitated Zimbabweans across. You know that um, we, in our individual capacities, belonged to uh, the Movement for Democratic Change Alliance, as it was, um, as led by President Changrai at the time and eventually by President Nelson Chamisa, and leading, obviously, to the assault that happened to the movement and after that, we had wild consultations across the country, uh, particularly in the countryside, to hear and confess with the citizens in terms of what is the way forward for the democratic uh, movement in our country, not necessarily the MDC as it was then, but the democratic movement itself, uh, because the democratic movement is broad. It goes beyond political parties. It encompasses the students' union. It encompasses... Um, the labor movement, it encompasses the progressive citizens and encompasses the church. So that forms what is called in Zimbabwean body politic, the democratic family. And the wider consultations with the democratic family led us um, into the realization that, look, the politics in this country has been uh, uh, facing a lot of problems, um, particularly around uh, the attack of the authentic opposition that did happen at the time. And 
the consensus really became that there must be need of a formation of a new and underlying new political movement in this country. And conversations began among us different progressive Zimbabweans around the character, the uh, uh, type of the vehicle and the values and the ideological trust. And it is at that time when, uh, and you know, and I want to posit that when you form a political party, three things are very important um, to answer. And uh, the formative um, stages of the Triple C, before it was announced into the uh, politics and the political market in our country, three questions uh, were needed to be answered. The first one was the question in and around what is the revolutionary theory that must drive this movement? Uh, in short, the question was what is this ideological direction? that this new movement must take. The second question was in and around um, what is the central strategic objective? What is the objective of this vehicle? Number three, the question that was key and that was answered sufficiently was what is the method of struggle for this vehicle? Because those are three important questions when you are forming a political organization. And remember that that's why you saw us um, after the announcement of the movement on the 24th of January in 2022. We immediately answered those key questions. The first one was the introduction of citizenocracy as the revolutionary thrust or the soul or the ideological disposition uh, of the movement. That we believe that this new movement must be centered around bringing citizens back at the center. So that is the definition of the character. And there came the values of this movement, issues of transparency, issues of accountability. Those became the founding values or the soul or the ideological trust and direction of this particular movement, particularly given that it is coming out of the broad social democratic uh, family. Number two, we became very clear, if you remember, in our announcement on the 24th, that we are using this vehicle as a vehicle for the oppressed whose objective is to attain political power and to win elections and govern differently. So the objective of this vehicle was communicated emphatically that our objective is to form a political party whose agenda is to attain political power through an election. And I underline through an election and to govern differently with the intention to change the concrete lives of the ordinary people. Number three, the method of struggle was important for us to define. Because when you define a movement, when you form a political organization, you ought to be very clear in terms of how do you want to attain that power which is defined in your objective as the central objective. Some organizations are formed if you go to the experiences in Nigeria, you go to the experiences in Sudan, and, and the experiences right now of um, uh, uh, Gaza in Palestine, there the movements are very clear that their method of struggle is to attain power through the use of the gun. We said for us to attain political power, we're going to do so via election, and an election through the power of the people and the vision of transformation. So that became the clarity in terms of our method of struggle. So we defined those three things that necessitated the formation of uh, 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 the triple C. And I'll quickly delve into the, because we'd ask about the MDC and the triple C. The MDC alliance, as was founded by the alliance uh, parties and alliance leaders, had been made a nullity at law by the Supreme Court. So at the time of the formation of the MDC, of the triple C, the MDC alliance no longer existed because the court in Zimbabwe had made a determination on the fate, on the legal fate of the MDC, then it had made it a nullity and handed over the remnants of that particular organization into the MDC as was led by Monzora and so forth. That's why you saw them continue with the recourse and so forth. So that clarity uh, is important because I'm going to touch on it um, in, in my um, uh, next point. So we formed the Triple C. After forming the Triple C, the law in Zimbabwe about formation of a political party is very simple. You have to uh, uh, go to the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission through a letter and write a letter to introduce the political party, that's number one. 
but this is the name of our political party and we intend to contest and when you register with ZEC, that is the only legal requirement in Zimbabwe in terms of the law to register a political party. I've seen that there are so many people who would want for convenience to try and say to register a political party, you need all this. The law doesn't allow so, but for functionality, political organization then come up with their own governing bodies, with their own governing statutes. But the law of the land requires that you go to the commission you register your political organization and then define your unique symbols. And that is one of the most important things that the commission uh, requires to then uh, put before them that this is the symbol of our organization uh, for the purposes of the election. After which, when Zek then calls for all these other processes through statutory instruments, as they come, that is uh, second stages like nomination of candidates, the bringing of candidates, and more importantly, then a gazette is made at law by the commission so that the party that it identified itself as this particular movement, why it is important when the, the law says you must bring your symbols and your, your descriptions of your party and your offices, they do so so that when any other individual go to the commission and say, I have a party named this, there has to be a distinction because they will say in our database we have this party, and therefore, we cannot allow another party that comes and says with such a symbol. So that is important because that has been the tradition. If you go and check the history of political parties, that's why you had uh, some parties with almost the same name by changing and putting in the form of the MDCT, the MDCN, and all those things. Because at law, they have to be that particular difference, either by the name or particularly by uh, definitions and descriptions of the symbols. So we did all those procedures and made sure because we knew of where we were coming from and the experiences in the democratic struggle uh, for the past two decades. So it is at that stage where we made sure that we register with ZEC and make sure that we reinforce and protect our organization and did so in terms of the laws of our country. And we proceeded to make sure that we introduced C. we won in by-elections, proceeded um, you know, to communicate and with our members in parliament and all these parties also being there in Parliament uh, with their own uh, leadership, as it were, uh, proceeded to again to do the same process to go into the uh, 2023 election. And it's important because before we went to election, there were a lot of debates and discourses about whether Triple C, given uh, the nature of the pre-electoral environment, should Triple C contest elections or not. And we were very clear in terms of why we participated in the election. We participated in the election because in our definition of the founding uh, values, the founding strategic direction and the method of struggle of Triple C, we clear that our intention to occupy power is through the power of the ballot and not any other method. And therefore, that's why we proceeded and went into the uh, 2023 election. And in that very difficult, sham and disputed election, by all standards, whether domestic, regional or international, we managed to make sure that we frustrated the uh, two-thirds uh, majority objectives by the ruling establishment and make sure that we were able to be given the responsibility to govern in the cities. And you know the extent of the problems that were associated with that election, but against all odds, it is um, very clear and undefined. So this is our, what necessitated Triple C and where we are in terms of um, you know, our entry into the plebiscite of the 23rd. Thank you. Ah, thank you very much, um, leader. I think that is actually quite clear. Um, and if I just want to say that if people have any questions, please hold on to your questions. When we're done with these five questions, then um, we'll open up the floor. I think my next question to you would be, in terms of the recalls, you have also just hinted at, in terms of recalls, will Triple C survive? What action has been taken to protect the party? Because I think that's one of the most important questions that people are interested in. What has the Triple C done? Uh, thank you very much. Um, you know that our first uh, point of entry uh, when these recalls were initiated was to uh, communicate with Parliament and make it known uh, to the Speaker as members of Parliament that uh, we are members of Parliament, we belong to the Citizens' Coalition for Change. And the letter that you are reading, uh, Mr. Mdenda, does not come from our movement. 
and you know that what came after was um, the attack on our members of parliament uh, right police were unleashed on us uh, in parliament leading to our um, suspension uh, from parliament by the speaker something which was very problematic because at law when there is an issue there must be a committee that sits and a decision must be made in terms of the conduct rather than a unilateral decision by the speaker of parliament to effect all those other things um, um, that were effect as punishment to our members of parliament that that as it may we then proceeded to make sure that we write to the speaker of parliament and confirm uh, that uh, this is the correspondence channel that not just has been introduced but has been communicated to the speaker prior remember that we went into the by-election and soon after by-election we had to write to the same speaker to confirm our correspondence in 2022 and when we confirmed to the speaker the speaker acted on our letter and understood where um, uh, you know the communication of triple c must be coming from and it is on that basis that we appointed a chief whip after the by-election and on that basis that we had uh, our representative leadership um, in parliament and committees and all those other people that were deployed just after the by-election of the new political organization so in the same vein we communicated again to the speaker in terms of uh, who uh, our you know um, uh, communication channels are going to be going in the party but more importantly, we also had communicated to the commission in terms of who communicates, um, you know, from Triple C. So we immediately took a route to make sure that we engage the speaker on the matter. And we say that before that issue is heard and that issue is resolved, we are going to have a 14-day disengagement uh, program to make sure that we are, we are not going to any uh, formal sittings of parliament and local authorities and uh, that was going to be with effect from the 11th to the 25th of october and before up to that time three processes were being initiated number one which is the legal case uh, which is coming um and and on urgent basis uh, on the second um of november where determination is supposed to be made by the high court of zimbabwe in and around the question of the recall Secondly, of course, was the engagement. We set a delegation to have an engagement with the Speaker of Parliament, particularly in the front of members of Parliament, because the party mandated specific individuals who sit in the SORC to go and engage the Speaker to clarify that the Speaker acted on error and therefore the decision has to be uh, reversed. And uh, there were acknowledgement, of course, uh, on the part of the Speaker, but I won't speak so much on that because it's uh, the issue that is in court. And thirdly was, of course, to engage the regional and international parliamentary forums because we are uh, members of those um, uh, forums and it's important uh, uh, to have engagement at that level to ensure that uh, sanity is restored, uh, particularly uh, in parliament. And of course, the fourth issue was our engagement with SATAC and efforts are being there and our teams are actually still in the region, some of, uh, some of the, that obviously uh, the International Relations Bureau will be able to speak uh, on. But those were the four uh, processes that were being done. And up to date, uh, we have had um, responses from the Speaker of Parliament. And of course, we also had made sure that the legal route was able to stop the bleeding. That's why right now, um, um, after the case management on the issue, there cannot be, as a matter of the legal interventions, be any recourse of Member of Parliament. And more importantly, any replacement of Members of Parliament until there is a determination on the case, um, and, and, and that is what um, has been uh, being done to make sure that we protect our organization and we protect our movement. And of course, the engagement with the Commission itself, particularly to make sure that we're able to protect our members of parliament and uh, councillors who are deployed on the basis of uh, proportional representation uh, and, and members of the Senate, um, you know, to that regard. So um, all these cases are in court, and of course, we are very clear we are very happy with the work that has been done with our lawyers to ensure that we are able to protect our members. And that's why we then obviously took a decisive stage and decisive political stance to make sure that we are able to protect our people. We've obviously had our members of parliament and councillors continuing with our engagement in communities because we say it ourselves. The political decision to disengage from uh, parliamentary and council sittings must not jeopardize uh, our community work. So that's why we were focused there on those issues. Uh, thank you, because I think the most important thing that I was going to ask 
I think the most important question that I was also going to ask you, um, and I hope that you don't feel like I'm really just uh, throwing all the jabs at you, um, is that, uh, you know, Parliament and Council disengagement, 14 days over, you know, like what's next? I think that's, you know, today people, so people go to Parliament, like there's just like a lot of misinformation around that. Um, and again, I hope I'm not really just throwing all the spears at you and you're happy to just answer so that we can have at least the most brutal questions with the most um, honest answers. So please go ahead with that. Of course, there's no need to be apologetic. I mean, we are a democratic alternative and we must face all the questions of the time so that we are able to answer the existential issues facing our country. The disengagement was going on for 14 days with the intention to make sure that we have uh, the issues resolved. And part of the engagement processes, both at the political level, uh, particularly with Parliament, um, and of course uh, at the legal level, um, in our respectful view, has been able to make sure that we are able to protect our movement and protect our organization. And we have said since that um, um, disengagement has left uh, yesterday on the 25th, we are going to be reviewing uh, that particular decision, particularly in respect of the fact that this issue is before the hands of the court and it will be immature for the party to make a political determination on the basis of an issue that is at is court. We know that there are people who have certain reservations and opinions around the justice delivery system in our country and the role of the judiciary in terms of the attack on the authentic opposition in this country. But we're a constitutional party, we're a party that understands that at all material times we ought to understand the responsibility on our shoulders. That's why we've made a political determination that we have to review the decision, particularly in the interim, communicate in due course with the citizens in terms of the next political action that we are taking and the political decision that we are taking. Look, there are two options in the table and I want to be very black and white so that citizens are conscious and are understanding. And that decision cannot be made uh, wishy-washy. The first school of thought is obviously that there is a general feeling uh, by our people in the current consultations that the party must withdraw in total from any government activity that is in council and that is in parliament. And the second school of thought is obviously around making sure that um, we are able to protect our movement and be able to exercise our responsibility as was given by the people. So those are the two uh, dominant schools of thought within the broader democratic movement and we have to consider those and make a review in the, in the fact that uh, the uh, expiry of the 14 days happened yesterday and we must make a review and we, have, we must be very clear in terms of decision that we must take at that particular time when we know that we have exhausted all important avenues that we think must be able to give us a redress. So we cannot put the cut before the horse in terms of having a political determination on our engagement in, in council and in parliament when we have not uh, finally and satisfactory in, you know, engaged uh, in terms of other avenues that we think and remedies that we think must be taken. I hope uh, I'm clear on that one. Uh, that's all right. Um, Patricia, um, my co-host, uh, do you have any questions that you feel you would like to, to also ask? Yes, th thank you so much, the co-host, and thank you very much, um, uh, Champion of Stylus, there for, 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 you know, all the, the answers, you know, that you've given to the very difficult questions that you've been asked. Now, my question is around uh, the upcoming by-elections, um, and, and, you know, I, I know a lot of people have been asking on social media, and they are really keen to understand whether the party is going to, to participate in those by-elections. Look, the question in our respectful view can't be about whether we're going to participate in the by-election or not. The big question is whether there are going to be by-elections or not. That's why the question should be, because the law in this country is very clear. For there to be a by-election, it's either there is death of a member of parliament or resignation of a member of parliament or a recall made by the sponsoring political party uh, and the law is very clear, the constitution read right together with the electoral law is very clear that the sending and the sponsoring political party has to communicate that this certain individual has ceased to be a member of a political organization and therefore we, 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 we declare that there is a vacancy and take 
must act on that. So what you see, as I've articulated in the first, in terms of what necessitated the so-called illegal recourse, was because the speaker acted on error. And therefore, the proclamation by Mr. Nangakwa is an unconstitutional act because it is born out of an action that is illegal, it is born out of an action that is not followed due process. Because the law actually mandates the Speaker of Parliament to ensure that he is abreast and satisfies himself in making sure that all the key parties on the issue are engaged and so that he makes a determination. So we made it, uh, our position very clear on that and we believe, and that is our position, that it's not about whether we, should, we are going to participate or not. But it is whether or not there should be by-elections in our country. And why this is an important question for ordinary people. Because it's an important question because these by-elections are going to be made at the cost of the taxpayers. And this is what is happening in our country. The assault on the authentic opposition and the alternative is coming at the expense of taxpayers. And that's why we have raised this issue wherever we are dead engagement with ordinary people so that we are able to politically resolve uh, the crisis that is facing us. So our position is very clear and we've made it emphatically clear, particularly in our legal redress, to make sure that there can't be a by-election on the basis of a letter that was made fraudulently and a letter that was made, and a proclamation that was made, particularly by Mr. Nangakwa, obviously with his political intentions, which are known, uh, which is obviously one, to destroy the authentic opposition, two, to divert the nation from the big questions, thirdly, and of course, to make sure that they achieve their two thirds uh, majority. We have been in this road before. You know that when we went uh, just for the election, 12 of our members of parliament were actually removed from the process and were able to utilize different avenues to ensure that our people were brought back. And 12 of them, all of them won this, those seats, uh, you know. Um, uh, to return and after they returned they won uh, the seats in Bulawayo. So all these are part and parcel of uh, the assault that happens as we prosecute and execute our democratic struggle but we remain fortified because we understand uh, that we have to keep pushing until we achieve our collective um, agenda and the objective of our project. Thank you. Thank you very much for that um, champion of Stalos and I can also imagine the anger of uh, the electorate so you know the people that went off and voted and you know it's almost taking away uh, their voice but i have the last question that i'm going to ask before i hand over to my co-host so, so what is the next program of action going forward what are you planning uh sorry i missed that can you come again Yes. What is the next program of action going forward? Uh, thank you. Um, we are going to communicate, particularly in black and white, in terms of our um, political action that we are taking. But uh, part of the issues that we have done is to make sure that our local authorities uh, become functional and attend to the pressing issues uh, in our country, while we are also pushing, uh, particularly in respect of the redress. Uh, that we are seeking. And of course, remember that we made it very clear that we also want to utilize dialogue as a point of entry to resolve some of the problems that we are facing, particularly in Parliament, because our members of Parliament uh, have been given a mandate to make sure that we resolve um, and have a conversation. And that process has been initiated in Parliament and the conversation between ourselves and the Speaker of Parliament to ensure that we are able to resolve the issue of the recall and we address the issue of uh, the correspondence that has to go to the Speaker of Parliament and the channels that are used by our organization to different organs of the state. And so that is our immediate uh, focus. But the broad focus of organi organization is to resolve the governance issues in our country because the Parliament is just by the sideshow of the broad national question facing Zimbabwe. So our biggest question and the conversation that we have uh, jettisoned in Saturday it's about resolving the governance and legitimate crisis in our country. So it goes beyond the recourse. It goes beyond uh, 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 council and parliamentary issues. It's a governance issue at national level. That governance issue is necessitated by Zimbabwe having hosted vicious cycles of disputed elections since 1980. You know, fellow Zimbabweans, that since the birth of this country, we have never had an election that has not been challenged. And what we think as people say and what we propose is that we must be able 
to cure permanently the problem of disputed election in our country because it is at the center of the governance crisis that Zimbabwe is facing. And that's why we have put forward our proposition around a broad-based dialogue, not among its political parties, not in between C and Zanbev, not on the basis of sharing trimpens and trackings of detectorship, but on the basis of agreeing as a nation to say how do we end these vicious cycles of disputed election. In 1980, we had a problem with the election of 1980 and the election that came after the election in 2000, 2005, 2008, 2013, 2018. All these elections have been challenged politically and they've been challenged in courts, including the election uh, that just ended. So we have to cure permanently as Zimbabwe, hosting and always having elections. Zimbabwe is being pushed into this vicious cycle of elections that leaves leave society divided and united. So we are very clear in terms of how we problematize the Zimbabwean question. We think that we must resolve the governance question. But to resolve the governance question, we ought to resolve the question of how we conduct elections. That's why we have said any political dialogue that must happen, that includes political parties, that includes the civic society, that includes the church, that includes the labor movement, that includes ordinary people in their representative capacities, only to discuss the key questions of how we conduct elections with the intention to ensure that any and the next election in this country that must happen happens on the basis of our grid framework and standards. And those standards are not new standards. Those standards are there in the Electoral Act and those standards are there in the Constitution of our country. So for us, that is the big question and that is our big focus so that we are able to permanently resolve the crisis of this seated election in our country. Thank you. Thank you so much for answering all of those questions. Over to you, Paul House. Thank you so much, Patricia. Um, I think what we're going to do now um, is we're going to have, because we are 30 minutes in, so we're left with 30 minutes, um, I think we have to open it up to people. I would like to precisely say that please use your 45 seconds wisely. Um, I don't think this is the time to to tell stories. If we can just stick to 30 to 45 seconds, Comrade Ostalo, if you can get just a pen and paper, so you can at least, so five people will ask questions, then you answer, five people ask questions, then you answer. If you feel that your question has already been um, asked, please do not repeat it. So I think over to you, Patricia, you can now try to uh, align people at least five at a time for 45 seconds each. Thank you so much there. I think uh, just looking at the three speakers that we have on because others have dropped off. Um, I'm just going to pick. Uh, Senor Rod, do you want to ask your first question? Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, very good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Zimbabwe. Uh, leadership of Stalos, thanks for uh, reaching out to the people. Uh, very quick question. I think leadership is about accepting constructive criticism. Don't you think you have forgotten that the power to govern resonates in the citizens in as far as decisions that are speaking to promises that are not yielding anything? Um, I like what you say that since, uh, the 2000, 2000, since uh, 1980, it's been a vicious cycle. How do you expect to squeeze water from a stone to get what Zimbabweans want without coming back to the citizens and re-strategizing, particularly now, but following the same system, expecting the same, expecting a different result at the end of the day? Would you take that uh, constructive criticism? Many thanks. Thank you for that. I'll take the next question. Please, can you make sure that you keep to the 30 to 45 seconds? Uh, thank you very much. I'll come to you now, D. Uh, Morgi, please ask your question. Thank you very much, uh, Austin. Uh, actually, it's not a question. Uh, I want to say to Kate Osalos, please uh, be articulate when you are putting across what you want to say. Okay, what am I alluding to? You cannot go off and say that you're going to cure uh, the... 
sorry, I, I, I can't okay. speak to you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can, but this is about asking right. questions. Can I just stop you please. there, please? If you do have a question to ask, please, please do please. ask the question. Yes. Uh, if you don't, okay, sorry, if you do not have a question now, I have. Uh, yes. you, you can come back later. Yes. My question is, can you be specific? Okay, I, th I think they are connecting. Uh, please, can we be respectful to the space and to, you know, try and ask those questions because of, of, of our time. If you do have comments and if we have time at the end of the questions, we can come back and take on board the comments. Um, I will now go to uh, Seke. Uh, please go ahead and ask your question. Oh, thank you, Ross and uh, Ross. Um Greetings to you, champion gift. Uh, my question is around the court, uh, court uh, proceedings on the 2nd of November. Assuming that the court decides that uh, it's an internal matter and uh, it gives the power to uh, interim SG with the imposter to organize a congress. Uh, which gives him the power again, maybe to do further recalls. Uh, what's your response on that? Thank you. Thank you very much for that, um, Seke. I'm going to now come to uh, Mabuku, if you could ask your question. And then the last question will come from Michael. So that will be five questions in total. Thank you. Thank you, co-host. Um, Siziba, good, good evening. Uh, Maboko here. Um, my question, if I can point maybe to the elephant in the room, which is U Chabangu. Uh, we know him as somebody who is engaged in opposition politics. And you've mentioned about the letters that you guys wrote to spokes, uh, sorry, to the, the speaker in parliament, informing them who was to contact them, etc. I want to understand from a triple C perspective, what you think would have caused Chabangu to be confused about his role in the party if he's not actually allocated as um, the, the general, the secretary general or whatever the ca case is? Uh, why do you think he got confused about his position in the party? That's my question. Thank you so much there. And then finally to Michael. Uh, honorable, um, my, my question to you, to you is, I've heard your mission, you say you wanted to win the elections, and the main effort is to win the presidential elections, and I understand that, but you, you did fail. When are you going to have a true conversation with the children of Zimbabwe and say you're going to regroup and maybe try next time? Thank you, Michael. And uh, Over to you, uh, Champion Ostalos. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, before Thank you very much. Much. Um, can, can we drop off everyone who's asked questions? Can we drop off everyone who's asked questions so we can have space for others? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the very uh, you know important question. Look, criticism is important to some of us. We are a democratic party. We might not be comfortable uh, as a leadership collective about criticism, but what we will never do is to bastardize and criminalize criticism. We cannot do that because we're an alternative. We might not be comfortable about certain propositions, but what we'll never do and our ideological disposition doesn't allow us is to criminalize dissent and criminalize criticism. Um, and it's important because out of uh, different opinions and views, and in fact, the reason why we hosted this space as a movement is to also have the thoughts and the thinking and opinions of the people in this particular uh, micro-blocking side. Because remember that we're having engagement. Um, we, uh, particularly for myself in Chabalala, we're having our engagement, Citizens Forum, over the weekend uh, to have the thoughts of the citizens. So this process is happening across the country. Um, just yesterday with these processes in Seke and other areas where citizens are being engaged around um, the way forward, because we're a mass movement. So a briefcase political organization can make decisions in a boardroom and implement them, but a mass movement cannot. You ought to exercise due diligence in terms of particular strategic directions that a movement um, is taking, particularly at the moment as this one. 
So we are very clear, my brother would ask about um, having conversation with citizens. We are harvesting your thoughts in these particular spaces. We are doing the same offline as we engage with citizens uh, uh, in our um, you know, uh, communities. So it's important and we are always open to receive different opinions and views uh, from the people. Of course, during engagements, you know people that would want to have propositions and when their propositions are not taken apart, they then begin to register certain displeasure. But you ought to understand that a mass movement makes decisions on the basis of different considerations. And that's how C functions. And we consult with the citizens and we make certain considerations um, and execute uh, them. So, so it's very important to have that understanding. And we are very clear for avoidance of doubt uh, that triple C difference from those that we are opposing. We don't, as a movement, and officially, and I want to say it because we've had these conversations on Twitter where people might have their own personal contradictions or issues with people who might identify with the organization and translate those people's personal opinions and decisions to those of the institution or the organization. Triple C does not uh, criminalize dissent. Triple C does not undermine people on the basis of them holding different opinions and views. Defeat us at the level of superior logic. Let's engage. When you make your submissions, we make ours and we look at the superior uh, um, idea that must carry the day and listen to the people at the end of the day so that we make decisions on the basis of the collective view of um, uh, ordinary people. Um, and there was a question um, you know, uh, from my sister about uh, uh, Chabang. Look, Chabang is an impositor. I don't think in this space it will be genuine to have conversation on the basis of saying that the, he was confused on him being a secretary general. We don't have a position uh, of a secretary general. And I'll answer this to Zimbabweans so that they understand why those who propose that the new vehicle, there were certain things that were part and parcel of the yesterday movement and the democratic family that we didn't want in the new political organization. What are those things? Number one, it is the creeping sense of entitlement and the culture of impunity from the political elites. Are you aware? fellow Zimbabweans, that we had the conversations internally uh, in the yesteryear movement about certain decisions that were being made by certain political elites when we were in the youth um, uh, organ of the then uh, democratic movement. Certain people were accused for certain issues and they couldn't answer and they didn't want to answer on the basis that they were saying, we founded this party, we started in 99, therefore we cannot ask questions. And the danger with that particular creeping sense of entitlement and impunity is that you become like ZANU PF, you become an asymmetrical reproduction of the very same subject that we are fighting. We can't be the same monster that we are attempting and driven to replace. So we also that was the first issue that we said must be resolved. That the new movement must not be on the basis because there were so many people, new talents that were coming to the democratic family and wanting to contribute and some get bastardized and shoved out on the basis of that. You don't have a history in the trenches. You don't belong to the tradition of the democratic uh, struggle. A struggle cannot be that. One can't be a hero in two struggles. I've seen that there are so many debates about people that will say, because we've done this, we, are, we cannot be replaceable and so forth. Look, that's an exhausted entire narrative because every struggle has its own heroes and society at all material times ought to produce the heroes of that particular struggle. I'll give you an example. We are going to execute this democratic struggle, but we can't be in the forefront of the democratic struggle forever. We ought to understand from our ideological disposition and personal persuasions that we are going to lead and live, that at a particular time there's going to be another generation that ought to come and execute this struggle with precision and courage to the advancement of their generational interest and obligations. So that is um, uh, where we stand. And one of the issues uh, also that was important moving from the yesterday movement and and uh, those that became the uh, part of the formative stages of the alternative was the question um you know in and around uh, different roles uh, you know that the position of the secretary general in the history of the politics in this country had problems go ahead and start the history of political parties in zimbabwe both zanu and the mtcs which was founded in 99 and the collective recommendations was that the position such as that of the Secretary General must not exist in the new uh, movement. And to then come and say an individual claims that in triple C, which made a strategic and decisive decision, that this particular position must not exist. 
The changes of the PPC uh, were not just around issues of culture that I've talking about. We're not just on the issues of ideological trust and direction. You know that we had policy shifts, particularly in the new movement that we made on questions around land and, of course, uh, how we engage in the geopolitics of the world. And more importantly, around the structure and the nomenclature of the new movement. That's why you don't see us going back. In the yesterday movement, we are addressed in different ways. We had different uh, uh, organs of the institution because the yesterday movement was born out of the communist structure, which necessitated, of course, changes with lessons from Germany and other social democratic, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, parties. So we met those changes, particularly around the nomenclature and the structure of the new movement, how it must be done, and the roles and responsibilities of different. Uh, leaders in that particular movement. So to then come and say someone was confused to say that I am a secretary general because that designation does not exist uh, in, in, in Triple C and it closes uh, the case. Then there was a question around um, what happens in courts. If we go on the second uh, leading to the judgment of the case and there is a decision that is made uh, particularly uh, to try and undermine our interests. We have made our points very clear. The consultation that we have made so far concluded that, and of course we are going to communicate officially in terms of the position that we have taken then, necessitated by the circumstances of the time. But citizens have made a clear position that if uh, there is an intention to try and undermine the people, particularly the vote that was cast by people, if there is an intention and an objective and a conclusion to undermine that vote, the citizens are very clear that we must invoke Section 59 of the Zimbabwean Constitution and use the streets as a point of entry and register our displeasure around the decision that we have made. And citizens are very clear on that because that right is encapsulated and captured in the constitution of this country and obviously to be a point of no return, but the party and the movement is going to communicate on that decision. But so far, the conversations and consultations that we've made with ordinary people are very clear that if uh, this happens, citizens must invoke Section 59. Um, I think that those were the questions um, that I received, and I hope that... Uh, of course, there was the last question around regrouping and accepting. Look, uh, every organization and citizens, I'm not so sure, um, with great respect, my brother, in terms of the view whether that is the collective view of ordinary people. It, if it is the collective view of the people, the party is going to succumb to that view that the party has to uh, make a certain determination on the basis that citizens are saying you must accept this and, and, and move in this particular direction. Because this is a mass movement, and if the citizens detect a particular trust, this is the direction that we are going to take. And it is important that you understand. Uh, and I hope that your feeling and your view uh, is uh, is also associated for by the collective citizens. Thank you. Thank you so much, the uh, champion of Stalos, for answering those questions. Uh, we've got uh, a, another set of, of speakers, so there's about four of them, and I'm going to come to you, Noma, because I know that you waited a long time and you also dropped off. Uh, so if you could go ahead, please, and ask your question, uh, and then we'll move on to... Um, Ngo Bizit, so sorry if I mispronounce your name. Um, Ngo Bizit, and then Smartes, and then Koma Jason. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Patricia. I just want to bring back the question because I feel it was disingenuously um, answered. So to give context, let's not go back to the MDCA as a far memory, but let's look at just a very near memory of a party spokesperson self-announcing and self um installing and that being the new way of doing with uh, Promise Mkwanans on the day of elections, which rendered Fadzaima had and not the party spokesperson. But I like the fact that you mentioned that you're a constitutional party and the constitution organizational structure is absolutely there. Could you actually just enlighten us? What, what positions is this constitution limiting the organization of the CCC to if Chabangu should not be confused about his position? How many positions are there as per constitution? Okay, thank you. Thank Next. you, Norma. Thank you, Norma.
I think it was um, Nkobize was going to speak. Nkobize, I'm so sorry. Thank you. I, I do forgive you for mispronouncing the name. It, it doesn't matter. My question to uh, Comrade Ostalos is, Comrade Ostalos, does the democratic alternative have a set benchmark on when we are going to complete the struggle? It has taken a long time. In your conversations as a party, is there a timeline when you think that uh, this struggle must surely come to an end? We can't be in a perpetual state of struggle. Then number two, the last question is, what is the party doing to ring fence itself against the intrusion of persons like Shabangu? Because we don't know who will rise tomorrow and claim to be a treasurer of the party and claim to be a, or even claim to be the president of the party. So what 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 is going to be done to ring fence the party against the intrusion, not only of, of ZANU PF through surrogates? But of any person who can wake up tomorrow and claim that they are they are representing the triple C. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next. Okay, I think I'm next. Uh well about Gibbs uh Ostalos, thank you so much for coming through to the space. Uh, and the moderators. My question is on um the participation of the diaspora community. So I was listening to your presentation, Honorable Member of Parliament. You mentioned that there are engagements that are taking place right now uh, in uh, Seke and other, you know, constituencies. So my question is on the progressive citizens, like who are in diaspora. What is it that we can do uh, in order to to support you, uh, you know, as a movement? We appreciate the work that you are doing back home and we are also alive to the fact that you know you are you are trying to fight uh, not just as PF, but you're trying to fight each and every institution that has been captured and you have uh, gone even to the extent of putting your lives at risk so my issue is on us as the diaspora what is it that we can do in order to, 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 to help you. I know before the elections, we had some initiatives uh, that we ran with uh, around, you know, defending the vote and some, 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 some uh, fundraising initiatives. What is it that I'm about to finish? Okay, thank you. So my question is on just our participation. I know we defend the territory on Twitter spaces, but I feel we can do more. Is there anything that you feel as the diasporans we can do in order to uh, to help the movement, to help the president, to help the leaders, to help the party, especially now that we are fighting Zanu PF through its uh, uh, through the its imposters? Thank you. Okay, now I'm Koma Jason. Thank you. Good evening, good evening. Thank you very much, uh, co-host, Ken uh, <clears throat> Radio, and the Citizens Host. Um, and um, I just want to say, uh, before I follow on the question, um, I want to appreciate um, uh, Honorable um, Ostalos for, on behalf of the party, for actually coming forward to interact with the diaspora, especially on Twitter. Um, and um, my question really is um, just a follow-up to what Smartest was um, asking. I know we've got solid structures in the country. I know consultations are made every day now and again. But um, I think uh, the only problem that remains is that um, I think uh, is what Smartest was talking about, the participation of the diaspora. The diaspora is key um, in... Um, in, in terms of um, media, in terms of um, information uh, dissemination, in terms of um, fundraising for the party. And um, I think it is high time that um, we try, you try to ensure that at least there is some form of, because I know at home, I know the structures start from the cluster leaders, coordinators and all that. I think we need something of that sort maybe again in the diaspora so that we can have a coordinated approach in terms of fundraising a, a coordinated approach in terms of even when people want to do demonstrations and all that 
So that is where my, uh, my, my question is placed. But I want to thank you very much because it has been a problem because uh, people try to ask questions. We don't have, nobody has got the answers. And now that you have come forward to answer people's questions, uh, that is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think, I think for, for, uh, someone's mic is open for the five. It's G Mooch. If you could go ahead, please, and we'll hand over to uh, Champion Ostalos to respond. Thank you. Hi, Patricia. Um, thanks for adding me. Uh, my question is um, I just wanted to ask can, can you hear me, you guys? Yes, we can. Go ahead. I just wanted to ask Ostalos, uh, Comrade Ostalos, I appreciate what the guys are doing on the ground and I appreciate and I can see um, the strategic ambiguity. It works, but it's only that we, are, we, we were cheated. But I wanted to ask if they have got, um, it's called a, a crisis co uh, conflict resolution um, department where conflicts are resolved and things are resolved amicably before they explode i understand the terrain that the, the guys are working in and i understand you know a lot of people are doing politics of the stomach but do they have that sort of a department that's my question thank you very much thank i think those are enough questions um we can i don't know um are they five Yes, there were five five questions, and then there's a couple of new speakers, three speakers that have come on. Uh, so there were five, yes. Uh, okay, so I think maybe Ostalis can go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. I missed the normal question, so I don't know whether you can uh, let me know of the question, or I can just proceed and answer um, um, the other questions. Okay, I've just requested for her to come back up, but you can go ahead with the other questions while she's accepting the mic. She'll ask when you're done. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Okay, maybe no mic. I said, I, I appreciate you saying a lot of institutional memory in the distance of MDCA, but I wanted us to bring back the memory of a recent past where on the day of elections, a party spokesperson announced themselves and immediately became a party spokesperson. On what basis was that done if Chabangu cannot do the same thing? But you also clarified that you're a constitutional party. And within a constitution of any form and kind, we know that organizational structure is defined very clearly. Please advise us to what limitations do these positions count for? Do they count for president and spokespersons only? or they make up of a broader organizational structure? Thank you very much. Um, I hope that um, maybe after I finish this, we can have, maybe have the last uh, questions. Um, you know, um, but thank you very much for the brilliant question. So I'll start uh, with the question from uh, Brother Mlambo uh, on timelines. You know Brother Mlambo is a student of history, and of course, as a student of modern scientific thought, that struggle, as was uh, articulated by Marx, uh, to struggle is our reality. Human beings, particularly revolutionaries from one generation to another, are permanently involved in a process to struggle because the intention and objective of a struggle is to change the realities of ordinary people. So it is, it is almost impossible to put particular time frames, but programs of action have time frames. So on clarity in terms of our intention to occupy power is defined by the cycle of elections. So it is very clear in terms of the programs that associate themselves with that broad struggle. But even beyond an election, the struggle for humanity continues. That's uh, why uh, you know people even in the progressive world are struggling at, for different issues. Because from one generation to another, we always discover our own obligation as generation and something to ensure that we fight for, because to fight is our reality, um, you know, as human beings and uh, progressives in society. So we might change from one struggle to another, 
the liberation project, is, if I want to put it uh, very clear, in the three phases of our country, there was the liberation uh, generation. Its struggle was captured under the liberation consensus. Its central objective was to get one man, one vote, universal suffrage, and of course land as the key demands that defined that particular struggle. From then, obviously, came the democratic family and the democratic consensus. That period, which took um, from 99 up to, um, um, you know, for two decades, uh, was whose intention was to democratize society. So that struggle for that generation was to make sure that there's democracy in the post-liberation. So there was the democratic consensus driving that struggle. Post that, come, Triple C, come and enter African Nelson and Chamis and the Triple C leadership collective with the transformation struggle. Its objective and its underlining uh, agenda is to make sure that we bring transformation. That which was attained politically must be translated into the democratic structures and democratic institutions of society. But now we have to make sure that it leads into transforming the lives of ordinary people. There are me and you can sit down and say, look, what was started by Josiah Tongo Gara, by Nikita Mangena, by Joshua Nkomo, continued by the democratization process as was led by Dr. Morgan Richard Swangrai and the democratic consensus and the democratic family, leading us into the peace struggle that was entered, which is the consensus of transforming and bringing the economic gains to ordinary people who have gained democracy, who have gained, of course, in, in course, democracy in course, and of course, uh, political independence. So that is our objective, and that is what defines and the timelines of the programs differ uh, that are part and parcel of that uh, trust. The question on, um, on about uh, unity, on inclusion, look, we have made certain strides, obviously, legally. Most of them are legal routes to make sure that we protect our movement, uh, particularly around our symbols. Isn't it ironic that an individual can come with the face of someone in a symbol and say, I belong to that organization. Is it not ironic? But more importantly and more uh, uh, succinctly, uh, Brother Mlaho, to answer you on how do we intend to resolve and protect uh, and protect the party from further intrusion. The first one was obviously around the legal part, that uh, the symbols of the party, intellectual properties of the party have been registered and initiatives taken to make sure that we protect our organization, we protect the identity of our organization, and of course the properties of organization, because you know that the current history uh, of uh, political parties, ZAPU has their properties confiscated by ZANU PF, a lot of them across different parts of the country. The MDC also faced the same fate, because part of the authoritarian consolidation program is about attacking the soul and the infrastructure of um, uh, the target uh, opponent. So we have faced this us out in the democratic family and Zimbabwe is for post is unpaid. And the only way to protect it, that is to make sure that you are able to patent the key intellectual properties that belong uh, to the movement. But secondly, Brother Mlambo, also we have said politically now, from the legal side, it's obviously what I've talked about, but politically, we have to make sure that we are able to unite our forces because unity is key and acts as an important buffer against further inclusion and political decay of the alternative. So that's why you have seen us closing rank and ensuring that we are able to unite our forces, we are able to unite different chain champions, we are able to unite Zimbabweans towards a particular cause, towards a collective agenda to win Zimbabwe for change. And President Tamisa has been very clear in terms of making sure that the envelope of dialogue that we are using is a platform to use dialogue as a platform to unite Zimbabwe so that we are not able to walk into status on the basis of uh, destroying, particularly in making sure that we lose lives on account uh, of politics. So, so it's part of the uh, process is to make sure that we are able to protect our movement. But I'll then think also my third intervention with the question that came uh, from um, Jason and of course Norma. Norma speaks very passionately about, I would answer in black and white about the spokesperson. We have two things um, uh, uh, that we have not put in the public domain that have been used by the triple C. Number one, we have our governing statutes as a movement. Number two, we have also made sure that we also have our governing bodies. And, and one of the bodies, uh, to put it very clear, is the Citizen National Assembly, which is the highest decision-making body 
in our organization which makes decisions of key national uh, significance. And we have duties that are mandated to specific individuals, the office of the president, and different bureaus in the part and decisions during the elections were being made. In communication department, we made specific decisions because of the mandate given and bestowed upon us. And the president exercises his duties again to make sure that we make deployments and redeployment because once I'm assigned to the communications department, I can be reassigned because the communications department deploys are on the basis of appointment and the appointing powers and appointing authorities vested in the office of the president. But there are different organs of the organization which exercise different political responsibilities. You know that we change certain uh, staff members in our organization and those decisions were made by the administration Peru and uh, the organs uh, of uh, uh, our movement. So decisions get made, maybe you were conscious or became aware of the information department changes because of the strategic um, decisions that have been made by the department. But from one time to another, we made, just now we made decisions about how to deploy our members in parliament. We've just appointed the leader of the house, we've appointed committees. I, for one, been deployed in the, to the International Parliamentary Union. Uh, we have people that have been deployed to the chief whip options and, and so forth. So we make deployments and we make assignments and reassignments. Because once you are assigned to a duty, you can be reassigned to an other responsibilities, and that is how a political organization operates. But also, I'll turn that um, with the question, and a very important question um, uh, that is asked by Jason, uh, my brother, uh, there, and Norma and Nlambo. Part of the key things that the party has been focusing, away from the charade uh, and the market show that we've been seeing about RICO, is the processes of building a credible alternative. And building a credible alternative answers directly the question by Norma to say, um, now it is clear, it is clear to the CCC leadership collective, it is clear to Zimbabweans that once we are able to resolve all these issues, part of the key things of building a credible alternative is making sure that we, we put, because the constitution as you raise, uh, um, uh, Norma, is a public document. And because of we were in the formative stages and certain issues were being considered. And there is a stage that is coming that will make sure that all these documents become public because you are part and parcel of the citizens who must know in terms of how do we reach a certain decision and at what stage do we make this decision. And it's important because that lacuna is one of the issues that obviously has been utilized by the regime. But I want to tell you because there are those with a mind of... Um, there are those with limited understanding of how authoritarians operate. Authoritarians will always find a loophole to assault. The intention of the regime was to destroy the authentic opposition. Even if we had all these issues sorted, there was going to be an avenue. And if you check your history, how the opposition has been split before, there's always going to be investment and channels and avenues to try and destroy the authentic opposition. But we have reached a stage in terms of our program of action to make sure so you are going to be seeing in uh, time to make sure that our websites are public, accessible to the people. I was just seeing because that is within my department, viewing the website of the party and all the necessary governing statutes that have been uploaded there and reviews and we've been consulting with certain people who are experts to make certain changes uh, in our website. So all this ought to be there so that if you want to participate, we make it known how do people join the authentic opposition? What are the colors of the party? What are the values? And we're going to see uh, also some of us being redeployed to key offices because part of the important programs of action we are taking is to build the soul of the party, what we call ideological class consciousness, to conscientize Zimbabweans because what you see right now is a society without a soul. So we ought to invest in political education so that Zimbabweans understand where we are coming from and where we are going. So we are going to be investing there on the school of ideology and training. But it is important to have people whose objective is to educate the people because we were told that to the extent that the masses are not conscious, the leadership is to blame or the vanguard. So we have got the duty to make sure that we politically educate our youngsters, we politically educate young people who are going to take over the reins of authority in our alternative in terms of the future and governance of our country. So we ought to invest that. And we are also going to see people see pronouncing itself 
in terms of key issues we are going to see alternative cabinets coming in we are going to see you know the issue of the structure being resolved because processes are, are conscious and are aware in terms of how to interact with each other and uh, we are able to resolve our issues because this time and the time has come so that we are able to resolve some of the process but they are going to come at the right time communicated by different bureaus of our organization so that is where we are and it's important because building a credible alternative means this is what zanu represents what you represent so alternative policies are going to be very key in that particular process you are going to see people given the responsibility to make sure that they speak on issues uh, that affect our people on electricity on energy issues on agriculture and so forth so deployment is going to be very key and to answer jason to be very clear at a certain stage that is going to be communicated you are going to see the rolling out of how we are going to be constituting the party because it's a mass movement and we are building it from below because the yesterday movement was blocked at the top where a lot of people constitute the top but we are building a mass movement and the important investment must be building the base so once we build the base what we call as um, our our uh, you know uh, structures or leadership that are there at polling station level because we agreed that um, uh, we must build our movement twinned with uh, the electoral boundaries and processes so we are building from there in terms of um, you know um, the, the the leadership question of our party so it's very important and lastly there was a question uh, from brother smart that's a smart question around the role of citizens the first and the most important thing uh, to fellow citizens and I think that I have to put it very clear that, uh, like in any struggle, our struggle has bruises, our struggle has pain, our struggle has a lot of contradictions, and we face this. Just yesterday, we went to visit Honorable Chidakwa, um, um, who was uh, assaulted uh, by Zanpia Thugs. And I want to say something very important. I was talking to Honorable Chidakwa, the former MP of Mavuk, and say, how did these people drag you from your car to their car? Because you are a fighter. And he said, I fought for almost 15 minutes and I called out to citizens and no one came to rescue me. This is a change champion, a leadership, a part of the leadership collective of TPC, who is in the forefront of executing the struggle, executing the demand that the people have been said, that just confront Zanpef. They became aware and in their own intelligence, the issue that was being accused was about a demonstration that was suspected to be happening in Mavuku and him being in the forefront of, the, of, of that struggle. And because... People here in Twitter spaces had confirmed and said that we must occupy the streets uh, uh, and in different parts of our society. But when Chidawa called ordinary people and said, I'm being abducted, help me, no one came. He fought, uh, these people could not put him, put him in their car easily. He fought, but no one came. In fact, the person who was selling airtime because they went to him when he was buying a charger to one of the vendors in town, the first person to disappear from the scene was the vendor. The second uh, thing was citizens who disappeared from the scene. And mind you, this is happening along Samora Mashel in Harare. So you ought to understand, uh, to answer my brother's math, that solidarity is important because we are prepared to surrender ourselves before we surrender this project. But we are conscious of the material realities of Zimbabweans on the ground. That's why we cannot be pushed to say, look, you can decide to say, let us take this particular task. But we understand the realities, the concrete realities on the ground, and we ought to make sure that we organize ourselves if we are if to make certain and necessary steps. So we don't have to say no, uh, because emotionally we are affected by the assault. There is no struggle without bruises. The liberation project did not last longer than it was anticipated by revolutionaries, but they were always going to be set back. Your base is being bombed, people get killed, people get abducted. That is the nature of struggle. That's why we are permanently engaged in this struggle, as long as our people are still living a life worse than the dogs of the rich. So we are executing this struggle, but we are conscious of the realities on the ground, and we ought to have a mix of these particular interventions that are being proposed and the realities on the ground, so that we are able to protect our people, and we are able to know that the revolution is ready to be executed in a certain gear than the gear that we have been um, uh, pushing. So, so we are very clear, solidarity is important, and support from ordinary people because when you're abducted i was abducted and tortured in zanpf headquarters abducted by people in fact when i came from group i met physically with the people that had abducted me 
you know and i try to go that one this is the person and no one would come to rescue because you ought to understand the society and the site within the Zimbabwean um, uh, party politics. So these are part of the challenges and they come usually at personal cost of different chain champions. But we remain fortified because this struggle is about sex selflessness, it's about sacrifice. But you ought to be conscious in reality in terms of the challenges confronting society and the challenges confronting those who are at the forefront of leading this struggle without clear. And we are not scared. And zanu PF is conscious in understanding that would have chosen an easy and comfortable route to say, look, we have gone to an election, Nangak, we have won in a fraud election, we got to get benefit printers and trappings. But we are true to our principles that the election was flawed and that issue has to be resolved. It's not a personal question because if it was a personal question, President Chamisa would have taken the options of being a leader of the House, being given state security, and choose and would have chosen strawberry and dessert. But we chose the collective decision by the people. Even if it comes at a cost to our personalities and it comes at a cost to our responsibilities. We've made it very clear, and let me conclude this question by putting it publicly, that all our deployees are very clear, and we are very clear as a party, even if it means because parliament and council is not our station of choice. For people say the station of choice is state house, because when we assume executive authority, we are able to change the lives of ordinary people. Being in parliament does not, in its greater sense, translate the concrete realities of ordinary people. So we ought to make sure that people understand, yes, there might be setback about me being in parliament, but our objective has never been, because I defined our objective as I started this conversation, our objective as a party is to attain political power, that is government, in total, and govern different. And when we have parliament, yes, we have made certain steps, when we're in council, yes, we've made certain steps, but that's not the station of choice. The station of choice is make sure that we occupy government, and on that basis, we're able to implement our policies. We're able to change the lives of ordinary people. So being recalled, being removed from parliament by the regime, not by any of these impositors and people that you see roaming the streets and claiming to have power, when we all know in terms of um, uh, the pe people behind the recalls, it is ZANPF, and if ZANPF decides to close on that space, if ZANPF decides to close and vote, and put a vote of no confidence on elections and democratic processes in this country, let it be so. But do we stop to advance the struggle? No. Do we stop because we don't have members of parliament? No. Because that is not our objective. Our objective is to make sure that we occupy power, and when we occupy power, we are able to use it to change the lives of ordinary people. So I hope um, it sufficiently uh, answers uh, all the questions. Maybe I can take the last round so that we're able to conclude this space. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much, the uh, champion of Stalo. So we have just a couple of people, um, and I can't remember who came first. I'm just going to go with Nyasha, if you can ask your question. And then the last last person to ask will be uh, Vusi. Thank you. Nyasha, can you go ahead, please? Oh, thank you very much. Good evening to everyone. Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, our, our champion, uh, Comrade Ostalos, what measures are you taking in terms of dealing with uh, this Chabangu guy? Because he's busy destroying our party, and we don't want to be, uh, to, to, to let history repeat itself, of which uh, it happened in MDC. What measures are we taking? Are we supposed to go after him, or are we taking the legal route? Thank you very much. Thank you, Nyasha. Uh, and now, Vusi, please. Okay. Uh, good evening, champions. Uh, so, I think I have, like, uh, two questions. Uh, good evening, Comrade Postalos. Uh So, my question is, is uh, I think you mentioned something about the Constitution, like our Triple C Constitution. So uh, I'd like to know because Scarlett and we in do we lab? Do we have uh, our party constitution or is still in the making? And then uh, the other question is: uh, I've seen like uh, if we, we check Ubaba or Professor Westman, he has been writing like you know it's like reviews uh, when you check his 
Twitter angel is like uh, he's writing something about. I mean, if you if you guys are following, you can see that he's been using like riddles whenever he's presenting his uh his tweets. And then uh, I want to ask if uh, is there any problem amongst our leaders uh, like Professor Washman, uh, Nelson Chamisa, Tendai BT? Are they pulling in the same direction or there is some problems? Because with all this that is happening, no one is coming out like from Washman to say that what is happening is wrong, what Chabangu is doing is wrong, but everyone is just quiet. We find that we champions are we are left with uh, no one to ask like what's going on we're just asking ourselves answering ourselves you know so i'll let uh Ostalos to just help help us with that so that we understand what's going on is the party still intact thank you so much thank you i think we had one last person uh, who just came on board jt please ask your question jt thank you uh thanks my sister thanks and uh thanks uh you know stalos you know and 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 i want to take my hat off to you guys you know to operate in a very undemocratic and abnormal country you know the the, the, the things that are happening there they're unbelievable and uh you know for anyone yeah you know to to accept uh, the abnormality that's happening there, I think it would be totally madness. And uh, thanks for uh, raising the issue of Hon Chidakwa, and we wish him well, because if the regime can do that, uh, it, it's it's just totally madness for anyone to to start, um, you know, uh, you know, accusing certain things that we don't understand. But you know, my quick question is, uh, you know, when are we going to accept uh, ZANU PF urinating on us? Uh, you know, until, are we going to wait until we accept this urine as rain? I like what's happening in Mozambique, and should we emulate that? And thanks, Smarters, for what you've asked as a question as well. What are we going to do? We are willing to, 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 to you know, to donate more to the struggle until we achieve the desired result. So the diaspora is ready. I've got people that contact me every day. Champion, what are we going to do? We need to push this struggle to the end. It's only started. So we are waiting. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, um, I think that's our first, my first response is to the question around um, the Chabang. I think that we exhausted that unless there are other specific questions, but I think that they've been cleared and the party is working around the clock to make sure that we are able to resolve, um, you know, some of these issues that I talked about around the symbols, around the party's name, around the abuse of our party logos, our addresses and so forth. Um, so, so that is being taken care of at the political and, of course, at uh, the legal level. Uh, the other question, of course, very important question around the constitution, I think I spoke about it, you might admit it, is part and parcel of uh, our building of a credible alternative and solidifying uh, the movement uh, as it was, as was founded. So President Chamisa, different chain champions, the movement, and the leadership collective are actually pressed with the issues and seized with the issues to ensure that we build a credible alternative. One of the things that we want to do is to build a modern political organization. That was one of our post-election uh, agendas to build a modern and a credible political organization. So I know that our technical people, like I was saying, that just uh, this afternoon we're reviewing our website, and our website involves all these documents, the governing status of our organization, and we're going to launch it so that citizens are able to access it and they're able to contribute into the movement. And we're also going, of course, part of the broad uh, post-election agendas in the uh, agenda to build a credible movement is to make sure that we focus on recruitment and mobilization of citizens so we are able to translate some of our supporters into core members and leaders of the movement. So we are going to be engaging certain citizens, some public union, you know, some not, to become part and parcel of this citizens' movement so that we can all contribute. Because at the end of the day, fellow Zimbabweans, this is the movement of the people 
and we have to do everything to the best of our abilities to make sure that um, it is a turn for everyone and people with competence and capabilities are given the responsibility to lead our movement in different uh, zones and different capacities. And you know that the movement is broad. You are also going to see us um, coming into the diaspora to make sure that we solidify and build a credible chapters across and Peru's across uh, the region, particularly in South Africa, in Botswana, and of course in Europe and in different parts of the world. So you are, we are going to be exercising and um, initiating these processes because it's part of our post-election program of action. There was a question on, on Prof. Mube. I think that uh, I haven't seen anything I miss, and I hope that uh, I'm not missing any point because I mean Twitter handles of personal individuals uh, do not um, uh, acquit to institutional uh, propositions and positions. But look, um, I think that your broad question is in around whether who is who and who is not there. And there's a lot of propaganda that has been put out there on behalf of individuals. And I know that on certain individuals, myself, uh, a Prof. Oshmenube, a President Nelson Chamisa, um, a number of people have had fake accounts created on them, and particularly the fake screenshots where conversations get generated and spread on WhatsApp. And those conversations are fake, and let me put citizens on notice that they don't reflect the views of our different chain champions. Uh, but of course, the state will always try to manufacture propaganda and manufacture certain views which don't reflect our personal views. The broad question around contradiction, there is no movement world over that does not have contradictions. And it is about how we resolve contradictions and move on because contradictions emerge, some ideological, some policy-wise, some personal, and so forth. But we ought to understand, at all material times, we direct ourselves and attack the central strategic objective of the National Democratic Project. Because, mind you, in executing this struggle, we might be here to turn to the spaces and we might not be there tomorrow. Because when you become a chain champion, targeting Zan and authentically opposing Zan, you ought to know that you have put this sentence on your head. So the reason why we live uh, the life we live today, because we understand we are constantly under surveillance, we understand that we might be here today and we might not be there tomorrow. But we know that we, if they kill us, they're not going to kill the idea of democracy. They kill Len Mo Jongwe, they kill President Shanghai, they kill uh, 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 all these revolutionaries, particularly in the democratic family. But the struggle will have to continue. Some will come and take over the struggle and advance it because that is the nature of the democratic uh, struggle and the processes that we are engaged on. And we are not scared. That's why we always say we fear nothing. We fear for all because we understand that in this struggle there are contradictions, there are threats to our life, and we know that if we are not there tomorrow, we have left a mark in the annals of history that when there was dictatorship in our country, we confronted it uh, with clarity, without fear or favor. So problems will always emerge, but we are a leadership collective and there are always uh, ways. The uh, question by JT, of course, you, you are reminding me, my brother, of the conversation that, that happened in the African National Congress just before the um, armed struggle in South Africa, that the younger people there Met, met in an underground program and asked themselves key questions. Are we going to continue fighting armed people through letters? And that is what necessitated the change of the method of struggle for the African National Congress from such a gra as was inspired by Mahatma Gandhi into the key resolution that they made, including armed struggle, underground operation, and international solidarity. So a movement at all material times will sit down and consider particularly on those key issues and the highest organs of the organization ought to meet and make decisions in how we want to engage in the struggle. For now, we have defined our objective, that our objective is to attain political power. Our revolutionary theory is very clear, and of course, our method of struggle is through um, uh, the power of the people and the vision of transformation. Um, and thank my brother for the question around solidarity. Uh, my brother JT, it appealed to my conscience because we are living under very difficult circumstances. Those who have engaged with different chain champions understand. Just now, our uh, uh, Peru on, on international relations 
and uh, uh, Honorable Timber, Honorable Gladys Sachwayo and Honorable Timber were detained in airport. They wanted to arrest them, confiscated their passport because of the work that they've just been doing because they assist with some of the work in the region and of course um, in the continent because of the, their political responsibilities in the international relations Peru. So I'm saying this to dramatize the extent and the direct threat to the lives of people who are engaged in this struggle on a day to day. And that's why it's important to understand and to appreciate on behalf of the Triple C Leadership Collective and on behalf of different chain champions, the solidarity that you guys have given us, the solidarity that we have been given. Because moral support is important. You might not even donate, you might not even participate physically in the struggle, but just to give moral support to those who are engaged day to day to the struggle is important because this is what fertilizes and gives soul to the struggle and fertilizes uh, our struggle to go forward. So it's important to give each other solidarity as Zimbabweans. We might have our differences, but broadly as a society, we must be able to unite towards the particular goal and objective to liberate our country. And those minute and smaller differences might not be the broad issues that might divide us. Yes, it's important for people to have different views and opinions about how we must execute the struggle. That's why as a leadership, We've made the decision not to criminalize those people because we understand that, yes, I might have my differences with Alexio or Nobizita or my brother Kuda or Lighthouse or, you know, uh, Audrey, as I see uh, people here. I might have differences of, on how they propose, but we are all together, united, Dr. P.T., on the collective agenda to liberate ourselves. That is the broad goal. Whether Dr. P, uh, P.T. wakes up tomorrow saying, I no longer want to wear yellow, I want to wear pink because I support cancer and I want to be permanently associated with that. Or my brother Gerard says, I don't agree with the decision to disengage or to engage. Or my brother Freelance say, I'm not agreeing with Ostalo supporting Highlanders. I want him to support Dynamos. It happens. Those are minor differences that must uh, not stop us to unite on the collective agenda to liberate ourselves. Look at what's happening to uh, people who are in the industry right now. I saw a post that came from my brother, um, uh, uh, my brother Tinashe Mtaris, about running for seven days without electricity, right? So we might, you know, be engaged in this struggle differently, but this is what is happening to business on day to day. You might have money, but when you go to the bank, you can't take your money in the ATM. The bureaucratic rate table will still affect you. You might be in business, you might not worry about what happens in politics, but politics will come to you because the problem in this country, it is the politics stupid. So we might be a journalist and say, I don't want to be engaged on these issues, but it will come to you because when you get meager salaries, when you're being sexually harassed by your bosses that give us sexual favor so that we promote you in the national broadcaster, the national broadcaster is there on the basis of taxpayers' money. And how do we allow, and we're going to be raising this issue in our portfolio committee, on, on, on media, that how does a, a person in ZPC say someone must give me a sexual favor to move from Bulawayo to come to Harare? And more importantly, why does someone have to look for greener pastures to move from Bulawayo to Harare when, if our country is devolved? Why can't we make sure that Montreux studios in Bulawayo are built sufficiently for people to enjoy work there? But it shows you that centralization has taught them to the level and extent that people have to lose their dignity, people have to sacrifice um, their bodies to get, uh, uh, you know, favors whom they qualify on the basis of merit. So for me, this is our plea and this is our position from Triple C. Yes, people might differ and it is important to differ because out of those differences, we are able to build our collective agenda, we are able to build our movement. Because whether I don't like certain individuals, this is their part. This is the citizens' movement. It is the home for the oppressed. It must be the vehicle for the oppressed. It must be the vehicle for the downtrodden to find an alternative voice. So we ought to make sure that we are accommodative to those views, and we ought to make sure that we are uniting citizens. We are uniting Zimbabweans. It doesn't matter. It might be difficult. There is no struggle without pain. There is no struggle without bruises. That's why Samora Marshall said it to fellow chain champions and revolutionaries who are fighting today, speaking at the time, that when bullets begin to flower, the struggle in Zimbabwe is our struggle. So we did give each other solidarity with the suffering masses of Mozambique, with the suffering citizens of Western Sahara. We give them our emphatic solidarity.
because we understand that the liberation of one country in Africa is not sufficient without the liberation of the other African countries. So we ought to make sure that the transformation discourse is collective so that we change the lives of Zimbabweans in particular and Africans in general. So that is what defines our struggle. Fellow Zimbabweans, fellow citizens, we hosted this space to make sure that we give you update in terms of happen what is happening in your movement and also to gather your thoughts. Let me thank everyone who has been here listening to our agenda listening to our proposition but more importantly the contributions from citizens because we are collecting them to make sure that we submit them to the le relevant organs and bureaus of our party for considerations as we build and wage our collective fight against dictatorship and against fascism citizens are assured that under extreme difficult conditions and the current assault that the democratic alternative facing you are assured that we are going to remain undeterred we are going to remain focused on the big price on, on the game, that is democracy, that is the price to make sure that they change in our country and to make sure that President Chamisa ushers in the National Democratic Project to the next step. Thank you very much, uh, the host citizens and the Change Radio, thank you for hosting us, uh, fellow citizens, and I will be able to take leave. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Honourable uh, Siziba, for taking the time to be amongst us and for clarifying and responding to all those questions, some very difficult questions that we put across to you. Thank you very, very much. I know that there was CC Nab, Dr. Ranga, who wanted to say hello. He's here. Uh, host, can you please prepare a song to play us out? And CC Nab, I, I don't know if I'm breaking protocol, but you can say hello to our Honourable Siziba and then we'll close. <laughs> <laughs> sister Patricia, thank you so much and hello honorable, that's all I wanted to say, hello sister Jessica uh, I wanted to ask, you know I'm a very partisan person but the question I was going to ask, I think the honorable touched on it a little bit if I'm an ordinary Zimbabwean citizen who is not triple C uh, I might be ZANU PF, I might be an independent I might be a neutral why should all this discussion we had for the past hour and some change matter to me as a Zimbabwean citizen. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Maybe let me give him um, um, uh, because we, he has a very important question. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Why must a ZANU-PF individual be concerned about what's happening in Triple C? There are two important reasons. Number one, this issue is not, as I've said, about Triple C. It is about the attack on democracy, it's about undermining institutions of the state, it is introducing constitutional delinquency. And the danger of that is that we are setting a terrible precedence. You remember that there was a letter that was submitted to Mr. Mdenda to say, I am a ZANPF, there is a person who wrote to Mdenda and say, I am the Secretary General of ZANPF and I have recorded 70 members of parliament from ZANPF. It shows and it dramatizes, the Muppet show, it dramatizes how much our democracy has been reduced to and any progressive Zimbabweans ought to be worried about the attack on institutions. What is the role of parliament? If I may put it uh, clear, the role of parliament is fundamentally on two respects. Number one is to make the law. Number two is to make sure that we hold the executive to account on behalf of ordinary people. When there is poverty in this country, it doesn't choose a political party. When people are being attacked by hunger, by uh, portals by underdevelopment in our country, go to other countries. Societies are progressing. Here in Zimbabwe, we are stuck in Musea, big name, we are stuck in uh, fascism, we are stuck in attack where we are supposed to be building our country. And it is not to the undermining of interest for the political elite in ZANU. When they have accidents, they are going to elite their people to go to be treated. And I know, and ZANU people can confirm this. When you face problem, just recently I was reading an article from the Mirror about um, a FARS leader who was terrorizing people and then buried in a $30 may he so rest in power. This is how much the ordinary people's lives is reduced and their dignity affected by the political elites. You know that their children learn out of the country. Their children are actually treating, in fact, they won't even take the opportunity to come and defend their own organization. They know there are people who are going to be given a time to spend hours defending uh, their political party at the expense of their own benefit. Honorable Joanna Mo made at, at, um, at differences with uh, during our scaffold in 
in parliament. And they went to a, to a house and attacked her, physically thrown through stones, broke windows and so forth. But she's representing a generation of younger people, regardless of whether they are Zanu or they are Tsibusi. Because when we go to parliament, when we go to council, when we occupy strategic state, we don't do so on behalf of Tsibusi cadres and members. We do so on behalf of citizens. Lastly, and what is more important, Doc, you know that um, there were people who were in Zanpf in the time of Mr. Mugabe who would say terrible things. My friend there right now, somewhere in exile, most, most likely uh, in, in Kenya, a some opposite, would come and attack the authentic opposition, you know, stories around, uh, you know, media houses that were being attacked. But they came to a stage when there was uh, um, uh, the military intervention. They needed the support of the very same newspapers that they initiated the attack on the same. Why? Because nothing lasts forever. You know that recently there were laws that were used to try and ban, uh, you know, some of the colleagues, but when they had an opportunity, and I don't want to go to that history, but I want to dramatize how things changed in politics in this country. And it's important if you're in ZANU-PF, it's important that if you're in government, you understand they used to say Mkabe is going to be there forever. They used to say Mkabe is going to last forever. But we know that Mkabe is no longer there now. Because whether they like it or not, politicians come and go. What remains is our country. What remains is our tip of shaped nation. And we must focus and do to the best of our abilities. I can't terrorize a fellow citizen because tomorrow I would need the same citizen to protect me when political favor is not on my side. So we have to invest to make sure that we build strong institutions, so that even if you are no longer in Zanpef, state institutions are there to protect you. Because the fidelity of the judiciary, we have our case that is going to court uh, on the second. And it's important to state this fact. The judiciary, as third arm of the state, its fidelity is to the constitution of this country, not to the political elites. Because when political favor is not in the favor of the current establishment, we must not use and weaponize the law against those that differ with us. They must be protected by the same law. That's why we made our position as Triple C. Whatever political differences we had with Honorable Kasukwe, we said he must have his sacrosanct right to contest. 